Hey all you super players out there, Ben Lotus aka Five Buck Lunch, coming at you today with a prediction video for post set 10 tier list. We're going to go over the leaders that I think are good enough to be tier 1, if I think any of them are tier S, and we'll do 1.5 and 2 as well, as long with a couple that are possible to be in this tier, but I'm not really 100% sure on yet. Obviously, these are all conjectures, and I'm sure I will be horribly wrong in two months, and you will all yell at me for it, but that's just the price I'm willing to pay. So, yeah, let's get into it and take a look. So, first off, uh, Super Saiyan Trunks Envoy of Justice. Uh, if you can't see these, this is kind of the best images I can get, but uh, this is the blue trunks from set 10, the one that allows you to put battle cards in your life, and you take the life and you put them in your energy. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, I think this is solid tier 2. Uh, I think it's too much, it relies too much on your opponent doing things for it ever to be like tier 1. And I don't think it has a strong enough game plan to be 1.5, but I do think it's decent and it might pop up in top cuts now and again, you know, as like a one-up deck. Uh, Sun Shenron, that's the new Yo leader from this set, is 100% tier 1. The leader and the battle cards that go with it are all crazy. This is very close, I think, with the nerfing of a lot of the other decks to being a tier 0 deck. It, it's, it is possible that it may end up kind of taking over a little bit. It's countered a little bit by Rush decks, which we do have a couple of. In particular, Green Gohan does particularly well against it. But it is uh, it is a very scary deck, and it's very easy to play, which is also very scary. So it's going to see a lot of tournament presence. The Set 1 Goku remake, I, don't know, I call them re uh, remake Ku. We'll see what uh, ended up being called. That's going in the possible tier. So we'll have to see. It's basically if Mono Blue is good enough or not. I'm not sure if it's good enough to kind of overtake the other Tier 1 decks, and I don't think it has a great matchup against some of them, too, with like their auto-win conditions, like Shenron's ult and uh, other things that just win the game outright. Goku just kind of plays like a grindy game and untaps and kind of outvalues your opponent, which I'm not sure if that's going to be good in the format, but it is possible, so we're leaving it there. Uh, Invoker Goku, Tier 1. I think Invoker is looking pretty good uh, post-set 10. It has a lot of win conditions that just win you the game, and aside from a couple rush decks, there isn't really much that's going to rush you down. Uh, it stalls very well. It just it just has a very good all-around package and puts a lot of other decks in really uncomfortable positions. So I think Invoker is going to be Tier 1. It also, with the removing of Surge Coup and Piccolo uh, Surge, lost a lot of its bad mashups. Uh, Bundle of Confidence Hercule. So there's a lot of really good... Uh, he's impossible, by the way. Uh, there's a lot of really good Earthling support, Red Earthling support in the new set, as well as a couple other tricks he can do. I think he might actually come back into the meta. Another thing that really helps him is the fact that you can play 60 cards in your deck now. Since he draws and cycles through so many cards, he's a leader you probably actually want to play 60 cards with so you don't deck yourself out, because that was a real problem with Hercule before. Uh, Golden Freeze, the final assailant for Universe 7. I'm going to put in Tier 2. I think it's good. There's a lot of cool things it can do, but the playstyle is a little narrow. Like you're playing for the Black Goku and Black Vegeta, or possibly the Emperor of Universe 7 Frieza and Engate's abilities. Either way, it's a very late game deck, and there are decks like Sin Genron that just do late game better than Frieza does. That being said, it's still a solid deck. You'll still get some wins from it and do some fun things with it. Uh, Go Gotenks Display of Mastery. This is in 1.5. So Gotenks is a leader that punishes your opponent for playing extra cards and kind of plays a tempo game. It plays a lot like the old Broly leader. And it's just a really solid leader with a lot of good abilities that you can play kind of like the Broly leader where you can kind of flex on which, uh, like which colors you want to play and stuff like that. I definitely think it's very good. I'm not sure if it's good enough as the Tier 1 decks, but it'll definitely see a decent amount of play, because it's a very strong leader. Uh, Yamcha Super Sonic Striker. This is kind of in the same realm as the Hercule, where there's just a lot of really good support cards for it coming in the new set. And it has the ability to do direct damage finishes to your opponent, which is very strong, especially against kind of the more controlly decks like Shen Shenron and Frieza. So I definitely think it's going to see a little bit of play, but I don't think it's necessarily strong enough to be a Tier 1 or a Tier 1.5. Uh, Cell Perfection Surpassed is 1.5. Cell is very strong. It's another late game deck, though, and I'm not sure it's better than the Sin Shenron deck, 
in terms of late game decks, but it is very powerful. And being one of the surge decks that wasn't hit by the ban list also makes it very powerful. It has a very good game plan. The new cell support card in the new set is really good. We kind of just kind of have to figure out what the best list for is it, but I think it's going to be a very strong deck and possibly a contender for tier one. <clears throat> uh, Topo. This is the Topo leader out of the uh, yellow expansion that just came out. Basically, the game plan of this deck is once you get your unison and him out, your opponent can't attack with cards higher than their energy, and they both players can only play one card per turn. So your game plan is basically to remove their card every turn so they don't have any battle cards, and then play a big finisher at the end. We'll have to see. This has potential to be tier 1, too, as long as if people can figure out what deck to play them in. Everything I've tried has felt a little subpar, though, not quite what I would want to take to a tournament. But it is a very, very powerful leader, and when we get some more uh, two-cost-specific unisons, he becomes even better. So I definitely think he has a lot of potential going forward. It's very frustrating, especially for certain decks to play against. It's kind of like playing a Hatchiac deck, where certain matchups you're just going to win, and like 90% of the time, which is crazy for any deck. And uh, the other matchups you just kind of have to side for. So we'll have to see going forward, but it's definitely a very strong leader and a very strong game plan. Uh, Pan ready to fight, I'm putting impossible. So if you notice, there's a lot of these uh, red earthling leaders that I'm putting in like possible or tier two. And that's because like they get a lot of really strong support cards this set, but I don't know if it's enough. But they're definitely like possible to be seen again in the format. Uh, Gohan, I'm putting in tier one. Gohan is still very strong, and I think still the best rush deck. We'll have to see because of the influx of people playing the uh, Zamasu Super Combo, the dual color one that can tap down your leader, is very very powerful against this deck. So. Whether this deck is tier 1 or tier 1.5 is going to directly be impacted by how much people are playing that Zamasu Super Combo, basically. Uh, Goku Surge of Divinity. So even though Goku was nerfed, I still think he's a tier 2 leader. His draw power did not get nerfed. The fact that Red Yellow still has a lot of very strong tools. And he got... It just becomes more of like an aggro tempo deck. The thing that was so powerful about the Goku Surge of Divinity before was the fact that, depending on what you're playing against, you can play aggressive and use his flip side ability to negate abilities to get rid of their blockers and things like that. Or you can play a passive and use your ability to negate abilities on their turn and stop their doubles and triple strikes, making it very hard to kill you. They took away the ability for it to play super long defensive. So now it's more of an aggressive tempo leader, but it's still good enough to play and be good. So I definitely think it's still tier 2. I don't think it's tier 1.5 or 1 anymore just because they removed that flexibility, but it's still a pretty solid leader. Uh, Fuse Zamasu. So this is the new Zamasu leader. This also goes with the old Zamasu leader that does uh, 4 damage if they're at 5 energy. Zamasu got so many tools this set that they had to actually ban a couple, which tells me that even though people aren't playing it a whole lot yet and haven't really figured out a list, there's definitely a list there that is good. Now, will it be better than Tier 2? We'll have to see. Uh, this is one of the ones I've tested the least. But it's definitely there in a possibility, and Ramp is always really good in this game. Uh, Hatchack. Hatchack is going in Tier 2. I think Hatchack still is as good as he was before against crushing all the Rush decks. However, we've got some more powerful control decks now. Things like Shenron, things like the... Uh, the blue 17 from the draft box that shuffles their hand and their drop back. If you play that on a hatchback and they don't have any like a good board, they're just done. So it's definitely still strong, but it's going to be hard to get it into tier 1.5 or 1. Uh, Lord Slug Gigantified is tier 1.5. This is another one that has possibilities of being tier 1, depending on how the meta shakes up. Since it is probably going to be the best hand control deck, in my opinion, and a lot of these control decks, so if we see like a lot of Shin Shenron, a lot of Cell Perfection Surpassed, a lot of Topo, then this leader is going to become very strong because being able to take out your opponent's hand is very, very good against control decks. Whereas if we see more Rush decks like uh, Vegix and uh, Gotenks and things like that, uh, then it's going to be a lot weaker. Broly Surge of Brutality. Uh, I'm going to put this in Tier 1. I think this deck is amazing right now, and 
is kind of underwrapped, even though a lot of people like it. Well, uh, Surge decks in general tend to be very, very strong, and Broly was not nerfed at all by the Surge nerfs. The addition of Liqueur to it makes it very, very good. I just think in general this is a very strong leader and is tier 1. Uh, Kidku uh, is possible. Now the thing about Kidku is it's getting a Shadowrun Unison in the set that is very, very good. That gives it both extra card draw, which Kidku is already very, very good at, and it gives it a win condition, which is something that it didn't have before. So I really think that this leader is going to be a big thing going forward, but I haven't had enough testing to put it in a particular tier. I honestly think this deck could be either 1.5 or 2, but I'm not really sure. Uh, Raditz Brotherly Hate. This is something a lot of people won't probably didn't see coming, but the addition of the Vegeta Super Combo from the next set helps this deck out so much because it's a searchable green Vegeta that discards cards, which is the game plan. Uh, I'm putting it in Tier 2 now, but I think it actually might be Tier 1.5. We'll have to see, but this deck is going to be much stronger than people give it credit for going forward. Uh, Jiren, full power Jiren. This is the successor Jiren. Uh, tier 2, it's, it's still pretty strong, but I think that the Cell Surge just does what it wants to do, but better. We'll have to see. I, I think, personally, that it's just not going to be good enough to see a lot of tournament play, but it is good enough to go to a tournament with. Uh, Vegix, which is Tier 1, which is not really surprising by anyone. This deck is very, very good. Uh, the nerfs made it... Uh, if, if Turles didn't get banned, it would be the Tier S, the Tier 0, but it did. So I think it's just Tier 1. We'll have to see going forward whether that nerf was enough. But yeah, this leader is pretty crazy. Uh, Pilaf Shu and Maya Assemble. Right now I have it in Tier 2. It might be Tier 1.5. Uh, it's another rush deck, but the problem is I don't think it's a better rush deck than Vegix or Gohan. It is a much less vulnerable rush deck, though. So if we end up seeing a uh, a lot of people siding cards specifically for Vegix and Gohan, things like Topo, things like uh, Flying Nimbus, things that like really punish that strategy, Pilaf is a much... It can play later in the game with like other win conditions. It can do direct damage. It can uh, attack with the big uh, machine guy that has triple attack instead of just going wide. So it is much more flexible. That being said, it's a lot less powerful. So we'll have to see going forward if it's better than tier 2 or not. So this is the tier I'd put anything. You notice I'm not putting anything in tier 0 because as of now, I've not seen anything that convinces me that any deck is going to be tier 0 after set 10. There are a lot of set 1 decks. The The deck that is closest to being tier 0 is the Sin Shenron deck. We'll have to see, but I, Sin Shenron is going to be very, very good. And uh, other than that, some of these might go up or down a tier 2. And like I said, the possibles could kind of slot in anywhere at 1.5 or 2. I don't think any of them are necessarily tier 1. But uh, yeah, so in the comments, everybody tell me how horribly wrong I am. Uh, that's not just a joke, by the way. I do want some discussion on this because I'm interested in it. And I'm definitely going to do a video in probably two or three months once the format's kind of shaken out when we'll see how exactly how wrong I was. I am kind of overvaluing a little bit of the set 10 leaders just because they're a little mysterious and we don't really know how good they are yet. But I do think my tier 1 is pretty set in stone. I think these five decks are kind of going to be the decks to play going forward after set 10. But yeah, please like, subscribe, please hit the bell down below, see if I can get to 500 subscribers. I'm getting pretty close. Go out there, play some super, and have some fun.